Welcome to Electra Online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at what we call the Lorentz factor. And of course, the letter we use is the Greek letter gamma here. And this is what is known as the Lorentz factor. So what is it? How do we use it? And so forth. If you've seen the previous videos by now, you probably already know. But let's summarize. And at the same time, we want to come up with expression for beta, the kinetic energy, the total energy and the velocity and all three here in terms of gamma. So you can see that gamma is an important constant in relativity. Now here's the basic equation that says that the total energy, if we don't have the sub subscript, we call it total energy, is equal to the rest mass energy plus the kinetic energy. All right, so how do we express gamma? Where does that come from? Well, one thing we can do, we can also say that the total energy is equal to mc squared. Now what is the difference? Well, this is no longer the rest mass, that is now what we call the relativistic mass. When objects move very fast, m becomes bigger than m sub naught. And it turns out that the relationship between m and m sub naught can be written as, so m is equal to m sub naught divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now this quantity here, v squared over c squared, appears in so many places that v over c is sometimes written as beta. So one of the first things we realize here is that beta is simply equal to the ratio of the velocity divided by the speed of light. So this could also be written as 1 minus beta squared, and we do sometimes. All right, but first of all, what we want to do here is realize that the quantity 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over z squared can also be written as gamma, so we can say that gamma is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So this is a really easy way of writing this entire fraction with the radical and the v squared over c squared. So we can simply write this instead of that, so we can write that m is equal to gamma times m sub naught. And so there is one nice relationship between the relativistic mass and the rest mass by this constant here called gamma, which is 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now what we can also do is we can go ahead and say, okay, that means that this here can be written as, so if we then take this equation right here, we can say that the total energy is therefore equal to gamma times m sub naught c squared. And then you can say, okay, if I can write the total energy equals to this, and I know that the total energy is equal to this, I could therefore set this equals to this and write the equation that gamma times m sub naught c squared is equal to m sub naught c squared plus the kinetic energy, which, which other words, I can now write the kinetic energy in terms of this gamma as well, and you'll see in just a moment how. So I'm going to turn the equation around so I can write kinetic energy is equal to, well, before I do that, let me do one more intermediate step to so see where I came from. I'm switching the equation around, so kinetic energy plus m sub naught c squared is equal to gamma times m sub naught c squared. In other words, the kinetic energy is equal to gamma times m sub naught c squared minus m sub naught c squared. And then notice I can factor out an m sub naught c squared. So in other words, I can come up here the kinetic energy can now be written as gamma minus 1 times m sub naught c squared. And there's another really neat relationship between gamma and, in this case, kinetic energy. So, first of all, we have the definition of gamma, the definition of beta. We now write the mass in terms of the rest mass, so the relativistic mass in terms of the rest mass with using gamma. And now we have an expression to calculate the kinetic energy in terms of the rest mass energy and gamma. So gamma is that important factor that once you know what it is, you can calculate a lot of other things. In addition to that, we can also relate. So here we have an expression of a kinetic energy. So now we also have the energy total right here. Oh, not yet. Let me write it down. So therefore, we can say that energy total is equal to gamma times m sub naught c squared. So now we also have a relationship of the total energy in terms of rest mass and gamma. One more thing is now we're going to relate the velocity in terms of gamma. So here we have this equation right here. So let's take this equation and solve this equation for v. That means we're going to square both sides. That means we have gamma squared is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared. So simply square both sides of the equation. Now we're going to move this denominator up here and this down here. So now we have 1 minus 
v squared over c squared is equal to 1 divided by gamma squared. And now multiply both sides by negative 1 and see what we get. So then we get v squared over c squared minus 1 is equal to minus 1 over gamma squared. So I multiply the right side by negative 1 and I multiply the, the left side by negative 1. Moving the neg negative 1 over, that becomes now a positive 1. So we have v squared over c squared is equal to 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. <clears throat> Excuse me, now multiply both sides by c squared, I get v squared is equal to c squared times the quantity 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. And finally, if I now take the square root of both sides, let's see what we get. So now we have v is equal to c times the square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. And now you can see that we also have a relationship between the velocity and gamma and so that's really neat. So once we know what gamma is equal to, we can very easily calculate the velocity. As an example, let's say if gamma is equal to 2, all right? Can we then calculate the velocity? Can we calculate the total energy? Can we calculate the kinetic energy? Yes, if we know the rest mass of the particle, we can calculate the energy, the kinetic energy, and the velocity. So let me show you how to calculate the velocity if gamma was equal to 2. So we can then say that velocity is equal to the speed of light times the square root of 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. So the velocity is equal to c times the square root of 1 minus 1 over 4. So v is equal to c times the square root of 1 minus a quarter, which is 3 quarters. So it's simply the square root of 3 quarters. So 0.75, take the square root, which is 0.866. So therefore, in this case, v is equal to 0 0.866 times the speed of light. So notice, once you determine what gamma is equal to, you can easily calculate the velocity, you can calculate the total energy of a particle, you can calculate the kinetic energy of a particle. It makes it really easy. And that's what we call taking a close-up look at the Lorentz factor. And that's how it's done.